I watch these films. I, I watch the bad films, so you don't have to. Yeah. You know, the hardest part of round tables was always just getting that table together, that date. I was in the management, in the artist management business before I was in the artist management business. And the egos, because uh, why he can't come at this time? I mean, like, so, so you have to kind of be gentle. I know actors who pulled back because they've been told that you know, you're just all over the place. You missed him for four, five years. There was a lot of guilt associated with what he'd been through with his with his son. We couldn't do anything. When we when we should have, but we will make this film a hit. But certainly being over accessible is maybe making people feel like. But then why do we need to go into the theater and pay like a thousand bucks to watch a film? Welcome to Take a Pause with me, Varun Dugirala. I always think about what my first question should be. Uh-huh. Now, with you, it was, I'm like, but I think it was obvious for me to think about saying that. Where did, what is your earliest recollection of your connection with the movies, the movie. with cinema, or anything else? Um, I ask this question to my mum all the time because it's a strange one. I rem- the, the first recollection I have of going to the movies, um, it's, it's fragmented, but I, I think I was seven or eight and my mum took me to watch Jaws at New Excelsior Cinema. Mm. What she was thinking, <laughs> taking a seven-year-old, why at, at that time, this was many years ago, yeah. near, near, 39 years ago, that they that you could, that a seven-year-old could even be admitted into, into Jaws. Yeah. These are questions that we yeah. will put aside. But that is my earliest memory. And, and um, at that time, it was just fascinating and, and, and deeply scarring. Um, but it, it sort of led to many things. I think it also, I think it, it, it led me to eventually realize just the power of the moving image. Mm. Um, and, and, and subsequently, of course, just the power of cinema and, and, and how it can have this huge impact on you and how it can tran- really transport you to a different world and, and all of those things. Uh, but in that moment as a seven-year-old, just the, just sharks, man. <laughs> like a seven-year-old discovering <laughs> sharks. Is, it was just, it was, it was, uh, really really impactful because I've had this lifelong fascination and fear of sharks mm. and, and and we'll talk about that but um, that's the one and seven seven year old um, going to watch Jaws for the first time coming back partly scarred partly, partly fascinated yeah. uh, uh, led to a lifetime fascination yeah Jaws seven year old new Excelsior cinema and I think of the genres I enjoyed as a kid I uh-huh. think of most kids and say what they enjoy and it's always the, the sense of wonder that yeah. comes with the, with the movie and I and, and you yeah. know I'm talking about today's time when you know you're thinking about okay what is this something I want to go watch in a theater or right. do I want to wait for it to come on streaming I think but if it's a movie that gets me to that point I want to go watch in a theater I want to watch that that I don't think it's spectacle it's what does it make me go like wow I didn't even imagine this could be a yeah. thing yeah yeah um, and all of those were weirdly at that point of time I remember there were Spielberg movies and there were like Lucas movies yeah. and I'm thinking back on what were the Indian movies of that time which had those. Um, Tridev was that for me, weirdly mm. enough. Um, maybe a little older than. A I'm kid. a little embarrassed to say that. I mean, you know, for someone who then <laughs> went on to be a film journalist and a critic for nearly 25 years, I didn't grow up. Uh, I was a South Bombay kid. Hindi movies weren't that. I mean, I, I don't remember. I feel like Kayamat se Kayamat. I mean, of mm. course, I'd watched, you know, a, a bunch of movies. Growing up, I mean Hindi movies, but I think it was Kamat se Kamat and Mene Pyar ki and stuff. When I started to sort of, I was at that age where I could enjoy them and enjoy Hindi movies, and they weren't uncool anymore. I don't know if it, I, I don't think they were ever uncool, but I think just um, you, also I, I lived in Kolaba. Strand Cinema was right there. Strand Cinema played all the English films, mm. so I remember watching. Uh, I remember watching Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mm. remember watching all the. You're right, all the Spielberg films yeah. at that time. So Hindi movies weren't so weren't such a. But but the ones I remember was Kamat se Kamat Mene Pyar ki Dilwale Dulhan. Uh, and then of course um, yeah. you know then then everything but um like the whole bachchan phase kind of i mean like everyone talks about growing up on bachchan films i didn't i mean like yeah. I, I discovered mr bachchan very late and uh, of course you know you like i missed this whole thing in my yeah. childhood but i was a really big fan of rishi kapoor growing mm. up so i used to watch a lot of his films um while everyone was like sort of the angry young man i was like the the romantic heroes yeah. sort of big fan so yeah. um but yeah i, I mean I, I i would yeah i would think um, in hindi you're right today when those were the big sort of the big 
multi stars right yeah, in those yeah, days you had yeah. the now you good luck trying to make a multi star <laughs> you'll never get two actors to work together forget three uh, um those rajiv rai movies those yeah. those sort of big even the subhash gai films i remember watching saudagar i remember watching 1942 love story oh, yeah. at metro cinema and that was so cool because it really was again transportive i think the i think the i think the thing about theatrical films and watching them in the theater is that the best ones really take you to a new take you to a different place yeah, yeah. um and and this is a pre uh, way before mobile phones and way before instagram and stuff so you had to commit to the film there was i mean you couldn't be doing anything else there was just nothing and else you paid for it so you're not leaving you want to watch it yeah. and you didn't mind that it's three today you're like please yeah 2 hours 20 is like the max you can take but you wanted them to be longer right. and you wanted to kind of completely i remember watching bodyguard i mean i know this is like a cheesy one but uh, and I, i was a teenager or something and 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 bodyguard came out and i remember watching it at eros and i think we went and that was that age where you're and you're referring to the kevin costner one that's sorry not yes the, the kevin the costner uh, not not i'm just clarifying <laughs> teenager <laughs> salman khan bodyguard no sorry the kevin costner whitney houston one and and you know we were teenagers i i was at hr college nearby and raging hormones and you know your const- yeah, so that was uh, that was film I, re- i remember going back with different dates uh, over over many months it played for a long time in those days movies actually played for a, for for many many months mm. uh, in the, in the cinemas but uh, the best memories i think of sort of growing up are are somehow related to the movies yeah. so if it was a date you were going you were going to a movie yeah. if it was a if it was a if it was a friend's birthday you went to a movie uh, um, if it was uh, if it was a holiday uh, yeah. you went to a movie i mean there really was nothing else uh, at the time and 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 you were also not, sort of ju- looking at them and watching them through not a cinema lens it's mm-hmm. when you grow up and you start but this doesn't make sense and this yeah. is not logical all that yeah. comes when you become wiser and older yeah. it was just so much fun yeah. yeah how did you become a film critic you know i i um i i i became a journalist quite early on in my life i i was 16 when i when i when the some, some lovely folks at the times group gave me a job and i was a journalist of, uh, i was about a journalist for about 7 years and i think at 23 i joined the indian express mm-hmm. and they allowed me to be a um, i was covering films so they said would you like to be a, a reviewer and i was like i'd love that and 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 it just it just felt like it would be a lot of power mm-hmm. <laughs> more than I, I, and I, i didn't realize the the real responsibility that came with the job and it's and it's tough and it was uh, and i did it for uh, for more than 20 years I, i i i reviewed films and i keep joking you know the 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 anagram tgi of thank god it's friday that was not invented by a film critic <laughs> because i never had fridays i mean your your fridays are like 7 o'clock also not necessarily every movie is good that you have to review not necessarily but <laughs> don't be polite i mean like you know 75 75 to 80% of what you're watching is drivel so yeah. it's it's hard uh, so anyone who says and having said that i would really must acknowledge it's still a damn good job you're getting paid to watch films but yeah. when you when you when you grumble people go like but yeah you're watching films for a living you're going to the oscars you're interviewing this one and that one and that's true i mean you know one could be doing way worse off things one could be working in a bank one could be working in some boring kind of firms so i uh, I, i i was i was 23 when i became a critic and uh, yeah and 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 it was just i i i self taught uh, uh, you know looked at the 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 i, I mean Roger Ebert was was a huge influence. Uh, Khalid Mohammed was a great, uh, mm-hmm. you know, was just someone that one looked up to, um, and and just found. I think you have to find your voice. Mm. Uh, I, I was very lucky that I got a form. I mean, I was allowed to be a professional critic at a paper like the Indian Express. Mm. Um, it's a lot harder now. Also, the mainstream. sort of publications and stuff are, are, are they don't have room for more critics but online such a big deal mm. now um and and i had to reinvent because you know you i was on i was i was with the indian express and then i joined star news so i had to do it in television doing it television in hindi i had to find sort of my you know find clever ways to do it i i, I like to think i'm funny so humor was a big part mm. of my reviews and then i was doing it at cnn and ibn i did it for about 15 years so i really i i had the i i really got amazing opportunities and i'm so grateful for mm. it um and i look back at it with great fondness but people ask me do you miss it now i'm like god no <laughs> i did it for way too long uh, it's actually pretty good fun to watch a film and then go home and sleep yeah. uh, the earlier was the early time it was like you watched a film and then the job starts because then you go home and you write it and you make se- you try to make sense of it it's nice to just not have an opinion or just uh, did you take notes while watching movie? i did i did i always had a little pen and, uh, and and you know the 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 light from your phone mm. and or sometimes just in the dark and scribble notes and stuff i did because i couldn't mm. i couldn't and not not earlier but as i as i got older i was just like it's 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 better to remember you know you want to remember a clever line or or a not so clever line mm. uh, which you want to quote back in the review so i was always taking notes in the dark mm. yeah you know i think back on the first couple of movies i saw right uska hamat se hamat tak like said mai pyar kiya then i remember like my bachchan fascination happened because, not as much because of shole but happened because of a few movies um 
there was shenshah which kind of yeah. took over just like, but super, as a kid those were those are great yeah, yeah, movie, yeah right you had that and then Did you, you see had, ajuba ajuba yeah. shenshah then you had um, for me shan was weirdly one of those movies but shan was great yeah. beautiful right yeah. just to go to but my childhood was mithun movies right, right. i grew up on mithun da movies dance dance and disco yeah. dancer disco and dancer, that category yeah. of movies was totally my thing i was that kid who would dance to um, mithun da songs in in in, yeah. in school yeah. and stuff like that and that when i think of today how we consume movies how mm. we consume now shows and yeah. this weird intersection of we, i don't know if movies and shows are different anymore because you see sequels after sequels happening you have spin offs happening so it feels Correct. like you're it watching a continuation up. yeah there it was like you're going for one event yeah it was a big event because as you said you're going for a date you're going for an outing going as a family and you're just seeing it coming back and you you're soaking that whole thing in mm. versus now we're like okay when i'm just going to like i'm maybe watch it on 2x or am i going to like go to another show right. um do you think the way we consume the volume of content we have now is taking away the fun of it i think it has i think i think that there wasn't there was an excitement there was an urgency and and as much as we talk about event films being the only films that are going to work in theaters today actually event film uh, film watching was an event back in the day because it really felt like um it felt like something special it yeah. felt like it felt like uh, you know you were going to go watch a movie it, it I it, it it feels I think we're just spoiled for choice, right? Mm. There's just so much today mm. that the urgency is also sort of gone. I mean, today the question is: Is this film worth watching? Is this film worth watching now, or can I wait for it to come to streaming before mm. I watch it? So I think it's taken some of the joy out of it because I think we're we're all sort of and, and there are and and you know I think it's it's uh, also fair to put the blame where it's due that the film watching experience has become so. laborious i mean mm. it you know today to go watch a film which is maybe a two and a half hour film takes about 5 hours of your life you're yeah. you're driving to that place and we all know what it's like to drive to a cinema in bombay to drive anywhere in bombay mm. uh, you're spending um, half an hour in in watching trailers and 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 and, and national anthem and psas and all of that and then the interval is really long because you have to buy those it's not just samosas anymore you mm. have to buy those nachos and you have to buy all of those things just, the whole thing's become long drawn the mm. I, i you know i i i watched a few films in america when, when i travel and i i deliberately i'm i'm keen to see what that film experience is like and and you know they tell you when the film's going to start and mm. and 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 you know that the messages or the trailers are going to be at so and so time you can just come in time to watch the mm. films um and they invest at least some of them they invest in the whole theatrical experience i mean now of course with multi with multiplexes and stuff you have you have great screens and stuff but if you i mean why do we why do we romanticize the single screen experience when it's so bad i mean it's like the, like the the quality is bad the yeah. the sound is still so bad in gitty galaxy i mean mm. i went to watch a film i went to watch an action hero the mm. ayushman khurana film because that was the only place it was playing and the seats were i i i'm a big guy i mean i i thought I'll, when i stand up i mean the seat will come will be uprooted with me they were like tiny seats the 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 theaters was really awful and um i mean it's just it's just not fun i mean we we have to i, I feel like people are not investing as much in mm. the in the theatrical experience and then i mean then then you know streaming is going to obviously sort of draw you in because it's just it's cheaper it's easier it's more convenient you do it at your will i yeah. mean if we if the, if the investment isn't going to be in the theatrical experience then then the options are way too many and i feel the streaming also has done one thing right is that how you build a narrative as at least has changed because you you could spend time in in and there's two schools of thought and mm. and and I'm this is more audience sure of course right is that because you can drag a story along yeah for much longer you tend to drag it on right but you also need to give enough payoffs constantly so Correct. that people stick on to the show it, it as well invested yeah um, I call it um, Abbas Mastan narrative because it's like you know an Abbas Mastan movie every 15 minutes the there is one twist yeah. right you know yeah. it's coming like yeah. you know 15 minutes ho gaya now one more twist will come correct it's almost like that when you look yeah. at many of the shows it's and does that take away from just generally how you build a story and keep it compact as well you know i think it depends on what that show is and mm. and, and what is the material like i mean if you know a, a, the great example mm. is something like jubilee which just came out which yeah. which uh, vikramaditya motwani's directed and that's not like that that's mm. you know that is uh, i don't want to say meditative place because that sounds like just a polite word to say slow mm. but i mean it 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 takes its time to unfold it, it, it he invests in his characters he's developing the characters the story really i mean it, it takes its time to for you to for you to get into that world and when you do it takes you to another place mm. so i i think that there are there are shows like that and then there are there are those shows where where you know where you're constantly on your on your feet because because i mean what is uh, what is streaming 
storytelling if not an extension of television yeah. where where you're constantly needing to keep hold people's attention so yeah. i i think the good thing about streaming is that there's there's uh, there's just so many different kinds of people and storytellers and filmmakers that are working in the medium mm. that you get all kinds i mean uh, and as a result because there are so many uh, hours to uh, or, or so, so such library such massive libraries to fill um, a lot of it is also junk i mean mm. I, i think we have to accept that i mean while mm. there's some great stuff much like our cinema there's a lot of junk out there mm. as well you have to sit, but but the thing is i mean the the great thing about streaming is you can do it at home right you can mm. like i mean you've seen 10 minutes and you're like this is not for me yeah. but you've gone in the cinema and it's not for you you're 10 minutes in and you're like i might as well suffer this or or then you know have leave. you walked out of a movie ever not when i was a not when i was a critic i couldn't mm. um but no actually you know no i have to say i don't think i have even even after i think you just i think you love the movies too much mm. and i think that also in my job i think my in my earlier job as a journalist or as a critic i think you lived for the in the hope that it'll get better <laughs> you know if you don't how can you be a critic for like 20 years of your life you have to hope that it and you know what sometimes it yeah. did like yeah. some t- great performance will will come and salvage yeah. the film or some great twist will yeah. be there so you keep hoping it's going to get better yeah. and as a result you're you're sort of you're you're sitting in that seat till the end yeah, you mentioned vikram motwani right yeah. I, i think he's a great example for like a modern filmmaker yeah. who's just gen- like i look forward to every single mm. Film, everything that series, he does anything yeah. that he makes because yeah. there's a way in which he tells the story that just feels like it's hits hitting you in all the right spots that's so true yeah yeah and i look at many of the films you made i'm like maybe that's the problem are enough movies hitting you the way where it, yeah you know i think the i think the the thing about great films and great filmmakers is that they're able to tell stories which which as a viewer we may not necessarily even identify with because it's not our story it's not our experience and yet you can relate to it and yet you can feel for those characters yeah. i remember watching uran which is just my favorite film of i think uh, of the last since it was made um and and that's not a life i've had i didn't mm. have a traumatic relationship with my father i didn't have the boarding school experience i didn't have that you know sort of troubled relationship with my younger brother I, none of those things were anything that i could i could say i've had that so mm. i can relate to mm. and yet you're able to tell a story that just hits you in the gut mm. and you're able to completely relate to those people and i think and and same for lutera that is a world that very few of us will fully kind of be able to say i know this world i know yeah. these people but but it's 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 some magical not universe yeah i suppose universal mm. language of emotion and 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 storytelling where you're able to 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 sort of draw on emotions that are maybe passive latent lying below but you're able to connect on such an honest truthful level yeah. uh, that that you can that that you will completely you know that 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 your viewer will completely be invested and root for those characters even though you don't know them yeah. and i think that is the mark of a great film you know when people ask what is a great film it's 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 one that can transport you to a different world but it's one that can get you invested in the characters even if you don't necessarily relate to their worlds or their stories or identify with them but yeah. you can it's the emotions i suppose that yeah. that feel but vikram is i mean vikram aditya motwani is I, i don't think he's made a bad i don't think he's done anything that is no. uh, that is bad yeah I, i i think the only gross i've ever had in a movie that he's made is that i just i'm not a fan of how the climax of bhavesh joshi mm. went through i feel like that's his most polarizing film yeah. but otherwise every, those who I love loved that movie till the climax I'm like yeah. one second that was supposed to be the pay off you didn't give us the pay off yeah spoiler yeah. alert for anyone who has Correct. seen Correct. it yet but that's my sort of yeah if i were to if i if i if you if you put a gun to my head and made me rate his films that would probably be uh, my least favorite yeah. but still much better than so much else that one has yeah. watched yeah. um but yeah so i was watching a um um a podcast he was on uh-huh. um with um, with varun grover uh huh and he said two things which i was fascinated by he first said that um midway through the writing process or like towards the later part of almost developing the movie of bhavesh joshi he realized that maybe the character should be a woman oh interesting and but they were too far along the process to to, to fix that to fix right. it but he says in hindsight maybe that could have been one of the things to do because he said look at the character that's not what you expect imagine the mask comes off and it's a woman and it's not a guy that would been- could just kind of fully change that whole thing out sure and the other thing he said is that he doesn't like to show blood and mm. violence mm. and any form of abuse etc which is a trope which you find a lot especially on streaming on like streaming, streaming becomes a, like a license to say that's save. the thing i think streaming has become i mean at least the at least the first you know the first lot of filmmakers that came out of the gate were like 
I can abuse. Finally, <laughs> like no censorship. <laughs> we can say fuck. We can show sex. We can do like the the most gruesome violence. And and I know a lot of actors got turned off by that yeah. as well. And yeah. you know, especially actors who have currency and actors who want to, you know, who are very conscious of their image. And they're like, you know what? I mean, like, not for us. Like, yeah. not not just yet. Let it settle, and then we'll. Uh, and and the thing is, you can tell great stories with those tools, mm. as as something like um, Sacred Games did or mm. Mirzapur did. Yeah. Uh, and you can use all, you can misuse all those tools or overuse all those tools and. and And have no impact because you just did it for the sake of sort impact, of yeah. sensationalizing yeah. Or, or impact or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And that also took. And I I went down a rabbit hole, and I often do when I see, especially filmmakers say specific things. Like one second, how many series have we made in recent times that are universal for like family of all ages sit and watch? Because you know, so much of it becomes this. That's absolutely true. But I also feel that's not fair. Like, I mean, mm. why should it be? Like, I mean, so then we're saying what is, what shows are like the old Hindi films or like, I mean, TV also. I mean, I don't, you know, some of our mums watch those shows. I don't think I don't think the rest <laughs> of us sit around and watch those. But like, it's the old Hindi film, right? Which yeah. used to be like that one size fits all. You know, I mean, and they were great for those times. But that's also because there was no other. Yeah. Like that was a time when when filmmakers and the industry just saw the audience as this homogenous one. Mass of people with the same intellect, with the same experience, with the same tastes, and that's why those movies were being made. And 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 also because there was nothing else to watch. Yeah. Everyone watched the same thing. But I feel like uh, so so I don't think that's necessarily fair because I mean it's okay. You can make shows which which only uh, young people enjoy, yeah. and you can make shows which only uh, you know a certain kind of. Yeah. But I also feel like. Um, in the years that in the years since uh, since we had that homogenized side of filmmaking the audience is also in fact the audi- it's a reflection of the fact that the audience has grown grown up and yeah. smartened up and, yeah. and when i say audience it's us right so condescending to say audience or uh, so i mean we, we things that i would not have been interested in a couple of years ago i mean you know Ted Lasso. When I yeah. when I heard about Ted Lasso, I was like, a football show? I don't think so. Like yeah. it's not my it's not it's not it's not my thing. But it's not about football, right? It's it's yeah. very little about football, uh, or or anything. I mean, it's genres that I I would not think a film like a show like Scam. I remember when when I, I heard oh, it's I great and and I was like, huh? But I'm not in the stock market and stuff. And everyone's like, are you mad? Like you have to watch it. And a lot of it is jargon, and a lot yeah. of it is about but they trading. explain it in a nice. But way. they do it in such a smart way. So yeah. I feel like um, uh, you know, a I don't think there needs to be that one thing that. Everyone can watch together. I mean, the the best shows, Sacred Games, Mirzapur. I mean, not everyone, not not the whole family can watch it or yeah. is interested in watching it. I don't think my mum wants to watch Sacred Games for sure. Mm. Uh, but but I also think that my mum now is watching a lot of stuff which she wouldn't have watched mm. uh, a, a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I I I I don't know if that's a fair. Uh, I don't know if that's fair to kind of yeah. l- a, a fair lens to look at yeah. shows and say is it appealing to the widest demographic. Um, but. I, I also brought that up because I feel that now when you look at okay, am I going to a theater to watch something has become a is this a group activity That's or is true. it an individual activity? That is true. So I think theater now the, now films that go to theaters have to be that big tent pole, broad strokes, painted in broad strokes kind of thing yeah. where the family can go together. So in many in many ways we've kind of regressed because we've gone yeah. back to um, it needs to be something that big groups of people, yeah. big families can go together. Yeah. Um, I, I just hope you know one lives in hope and one hopes that. And I talk to filmmakers about this all the time, and and they all say you know like. Um, No, it'll change. And and you know, recently a film just came out last last weekend, and 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 that's a rom com, um, mm. Zara Hatke Zara mm. Bachke. No yeah. one really expected that would work in theaters, yeah. and it has. So it, the the hope it's given is that if it's interesting, if mm. there's something to it, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't only have to be the Pathans. It's great that Pathan comes yeah. and Tiger will come, and all of those films yeah. will do well. But uh, you know, the films that we loved, the small rom coms, or the or the chick flicks, or the comedies. Mm. I mean, if those films are not going to get a space in the theaters, yeah. then that's really sad. Yeah. So I think we live in hope, and we hope that. Uh, Mm-hmm. You know that that all kinds of films. If it's good, I, I suppose yeah. if it's good, it should it should work. In, in I, I feel the reason why some of those have might be working, and and this is I'd love to get your thought on this is that we've had two things happen. And one is we've had an excess of like individual screen time, or just sit at home and watch and yeah. on our phones and watch. Or you go to the theater and you watch sequel after sequel, you watch universe after universe. Yeah. Um, um, I'm a Star Wars, Marvel, yeah. D- DC fanboy. I, I know that you are too across Star Wars, you yeah, know, yeah. Star Wars ones. And there's just genuine fatigue of saying I have to follow some story of five That's movies. Right. Now I'm like, I want to go watch one movie, get it done with, come back home, not care about how it's connected to everything else. You're preaching to the choir. It's <laughs> that is there is just such a cynicism. I mean, I used to enjoy Marvel films when mm-hmm. they, you know, I loved the the Captain America trilogy was yeah, was the one yeah. I really enjoyed. Guardians, I watched the first two, I enjoyed. 
but the fatigue is real it, i mean you if you're going to give me one every two months i'm tired and and you know as much and i'm I, i'll get abused by the we'll get abused by the by the comic book fans <laughs> they are cut from the same cloth it is a template i mean i know some of them are original i know that but there is just so much you can do with superhero films i, I yeah. most people won't agree but so 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 to every two months i don't need another one and and as a result i've gone off it i mean it's not it's, i i mean marvel doesn't care but i'm i'm not interested anymore i mm. i just really need a long break from them and i believe the new guardians is really good yeah. and i believe some of them are really good fun but i've had it yeah. i i need a long break um, just just the fact that it's it's becomes just cynical business right everything has to be interconnected and everything mm. has to has to lead to the other and 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 you and if you haven't watched the last one then this is only going to make so much sense mm. and there's enough fanboys kind of and you have to get off twitter for i mean it's, it's happening on television as well right eventizing of of shows yeah. so succession you had to stay away from twitter and for like SLM. yeah you have because and and you know i've already figured it out because now it's no longer on twitter now there's some post on instagram that is giving me something and i'm like there's a funeral and i'm like and someone Don't do this. and someone made some t-shirt correct, put it up and correct, i'm like i correct. know no. i'm like yeah, I, I, yeah. you can't stay away so it, it i don't know just the whole uh, the joy of it is kind of the joy of disc- also you know i remember watching i think it was interstellar mm. uh, i was going to go to do the interview with christopher nolan so warner brother showed it to me a little bit before it released and and apparently it hadn't even been publicly screened for critics in america so it was the first time i was watching something that that i had nothing i knew nothing about except the trailer and stuff but no opinions mm. and that is a joy that's gone i mean mm. like how much are we watching anything that doesn't come with yeah. an opinion attached yeah. but but i remember going into that film and i remember being like i'm so excited that i know nothing about this this could be utter shit yeah. or it could be amazing and yeah. i'm going to find out just purely on you know for myself mm. and and that has just gone because there's just so much in, there is an information overload mm. and there's an op- and everyone has an opinion i should be saying this because i was a critic <laughs> for many years but i just feel like I, and now people ask me what do you think i'm like you don't care what i think i don't do it anymore professionally so everyone has an opinion yeah. and every and there's just way too much and the opinion is fine everyone should have an opinion but um i just feel like we give away too much about uh, let people form let the the joy of discovery is gone yeah. i think the joy of discovery is yeah. really gone I've always um, said that movie critics take one for the team because <laughs> you're telling us maybe maybe don't spend that money maybe you know this is not something you you got to go watch and and I always say that I watch these films I I watch the bad films so you don't have to <laughs> yeah. But but once you what you also did and 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 I've, and I've always enjoyed watching those is that you know you would, you would talk about the movie you would give me a clear barometer okay is this something I want to invest time into Yeah but even you'd have conversation with let's say the director and the actors and you do those on tables yeah. and and always fascinated by the kind of things you got them to talk about which mm. is not the typical and the, the problem is often times i i still always find because i also work behind the camera as a producer on, right. on a lot of the uh, bollywood stuff uh, during my stints at mtv and channel v so for yeah. me it's always been like don't ask the obvious questions don't talk about okay how was your role how did it feel Correct. doing this and but you would always get them to talk about their process yeah and give almost like you know opening that curtain to what's happening behind the scenes yeah um, thank you were the specific points that if if you if i said pick a few from the conversations you had which were like okay these you know, are I great think, moments i think the whole idea of doing the round tables a if you're doing it 6 months later mm. uh, because the round tables we we used to do at the end of the year mm. they were very closely modeled on the hollywood reporter round yeah. tables yeah. and uh, variety does a couple i mean everyone la times did, did round tables so yeah. it was they were modeled after that uh, they used to do it just as a precursor to the oscars and i used to do them at the end of the year when when you kind of decide you make your best of lists and stuff mm. so i would it, it was it was like an alternate to a best of list i would mm. try to call the the actors whose performances i thought were the best or the director who's so the so the, the the good part about having that distance between the time that the film released and and 6 months later is that they've also got perspective and we've also got perspective yeah. when you're interviewing someone uh, two days before a film comes out or even two days after a film comes out it's a very different perspective yeah. they yeah. haven't even seen how the film has been received we don't know how, how mm. that film has performed uh, and more than anything else you have you don't have any distance between the work you've done so you've not able to to to, to actually have a sort of objective uh, point of view about it um and, and therefore i think you know one could ask questions about process and also whether they saw that, that process worked or not but if you ask them that two days after the film release or two days before then the questions will be a little bit about what was it like working on this and also you know we have to admit like all these guys have to say 
it's a great film. <laughs> Even if they know it's not, they're selling, at that time, they're selling those films. Yeah. Six months later, it, it's surprising how many of them were actually quite honest to admit that, you know, I didn't really enjoy this process mm. or or I think I could have done better. Yeah. Um, even talking about like previous films, maybe not that particular film because they were, they, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing they were good in it. That's why they were at that table. But uh, it was just, I, I, I really enjoyed doing these round tables. It was, I, I remember the first one we ever did, it was, uh, there was, Amir Khan, there was Ranbir Kapoor, there was Irfan Khan, and there was Nawaz. Wow. And it was the year that Nawaz had uh, Gangs of Vasipur, Irfan had Pan Singh Tomar, uh, Ranbir, I, I don't remember what it was for. Was I think it, it was Burfi? Rockstar. I think it was Rockstar. Uh, Rockstar came before Burfi? I, I think so. No? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. And Amir had Talash that yeah. year. And, and to get, the, first of all, I was like, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. But it had never been done. I mean, mm. no one had done it here, so so they were they were really nice about it. And Nawaz was shooting in Vai for a for a film with Ketan Mehta, which was like hours away. You know, the hardest part of round tables was always just getting that table together, <laughs> that date. I was in the management in the artist management business before I was in the artist management business. <laughs> I mean, just coordinating that date was the monstrosity and the egos because uh, why he can't come at this time? I mean, like so, so you have to kind of be gentle. And, and Nawaz was shooting in Vai, and we were, so the only way we could have done it was if we could shoot it at midnight. Mm. So Nawaz, after his shoot at eight, would drive four hours to Mumbai, do it, and go back to the shoot so he could go back and shoot in the morning. And, and it, it, all, it all worked out, except that one hour before the shoot, I got a call saying that Irfan can't come. Mm. And I was like, what? It's the first time you're doing it. It's only four actors. You can't have three actors on a round table. And they said, no, because he's shooting some Vaira film. It's the first time he's shooting with IRF and it's gone on. I was like, you can't be serious. And I had to make all these, and, and Irfan had put his phone off, so I couldn't reach him. And I had to start calling people, other directors and producers, like, please put no word, please put no word. I can't do this. Like, Amir is coming, Ranbir is coming. This one's coming from Vai all the way. I can't do this. And uh, Nikhil Adwani had just worked with him in D-Day and Nikhil made the call to him. Mm. And I was like, Nikhil, please do it. And Nikhil was really nice. And Irfan came very, very pissed off to be pulled out of a set to have to do this interview. Mm. Um, but it really went off. We shot till like three in the morning and, and, and it was just, it was amazing. Like, you mm. know the energy in the room and you know when it's not there also. Mm. There have been enough where we've done where you can you can see that these, the these people are just not, their silences or that the, the, the they're just not vibing. Mm. Um, and then it becomes, it's completely incumbent on you to to make it happen, to make yeah. the magic happen, to lighten the mood, sorry, to, to do, I mean, to figure out a way to, to kind of get them together. And sometimes it doesn't happen because one guest can be wrong mm. and, uh, you know, and, 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 yeah. and it's not happening. And, and we've had some fun experience. I mean, yeah. and not that he was a wrong guest, but the one that, one of the last ones we shot, the one I shot uh, was one we had, where we had Akshay Khanna because he had done this film called um, Section 375, I forget the name of the film, mm. Section 375, I think he was incredible in it, but Akshay Khanna is a really shy guy. What mm. was I thinking? Mm. He agreed to come. He just went, he just, he was just, he clammed up completely and we had Ranveer Singh, who is the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> so it was like one guy who is just like on, on 200 Red Bulls and one guy who's just like, isn't opening and, and we had, um, we had uh, Shahid Kapoor and we had Ayushman and we had so you had the spectrum. Mom. Basically, you had the it, spectrum. It was, but, but you know, like the rest of them were, had had got into it and this guy was just, and they were trying, they, we were all trying to like, you know, get Akshay to open up and as I, I would like, Akshay, you know, you, you did the scene and this is, and how did you do it? And said, I don't know. And you're like, this is not working. Yeah. And then they jumped in and you could, they took they took on my job because they started asking him questions. And it worked to some extent, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. And and that's also an experience, I yeah. guess. You know, you see a different kind of uh, round table. But I, I kind of have, uh, I, I brief them usually before. I used to brief them before and I used to like, kind of give them a sense that here, the idea is to open up and the idea is to be unguarded and the idea yeah. is to, and we won't, we're not, we're not, we don't care about anything else except mm. the job, about the craft, about the process. So it's not like you have to worry about the kind of questions. There's nothing. Mm. I mean, it's not about, it's not a personal interview at all. Mm. But there were, there were some that, uh, I remember we, the first year I didn't do an actress's round table mm. because I, I I was because I had the stupid thought that oh but women will not will not do it together because women mm. don't like I mean that's the cliche and how stupid of me to so the second year I said let's give it a shot and I had Kangana and I had Deepika and I had Vidya and I had Nimrit and that was incredible and they were so appreciative of each other it was it was amazing but uh, but the first year I just figured it, it won't happen and, and I didn't even ask so yeah. I mean I, there was the, the round tables were was something I really enjoyed doing mm. I really really enjoyed doing what it also kind of gave us, and, and I know that we live in a very different time today, but you always saw actors when they were on screen yeah. or when they did like almost the most basic of pre-movie interviews. Yeah. You never saw them outside of that context. Yeah. Um, you didn't know 
their perspective on their craft you didn't know yeah. how they looked at like you know not even just actors i think even directors writers sure. everybody else and you suddenly had this point where you could they were talking about stuff beyond the obvious yeah um and that was like f- and i remember for me someone like me is like fascinating to understand what's how their mind works yeah versus today when like they're always like, most of them are sharing most of that stuff let's say on social media Correct. they're doing a lot of that stuff that uh, i find this intersection of for who's a creator who's an actor to become this weird intersection of for, like i don't know where that line is um but maybe now the thing is that we have too much information about it is actors. it is true and and you know now the now the conversation I, i'm not going to name but i know actors who pulled back because they've been told that you know you're just all over the place you're oversharing and there is no excitement left anymore yeah. for you i mean you know top actors who've been all over the place have ha, are pulling back because they feel that we need to create some mystery and of course the examples are you know look at someone like a shahrukh and like he did no press at all for pathan yeah. and pathan was this massive blockbuster so what are you doing being all over the place and, and i don't think that's a this fair, movie where you just I, yeah you said but i'm sorry i'm coming no, into no. it it felt like a theater experience for me it was after. an event yeah. it was an event but i think pathan's a wrong example to give to in this context because i don't think any but, but there's no guarantee that the next shahrukh khan film will be pathan yeah. so it, it just the timing was was right you'd missed him for four five years there was a lot of guilt associated with what he'd been through with mm. his with his son and and i think that the film just as a result of that love and overwhelming appreciation i think just people just went out mm. so we don't even know if the next shahrukh khan film is going to be that big yeah, but yeah. um but pathan is a is yeah. just uh, uh, and he didn't have to do any press at all and this is the guy who really knows how to do press and you know increasingly my my when i when i think about it i'm like have we like have we never going to see another shahrukh khan interview because there was no one better than shahrukh khan it came to interviews there's you cannot do a better interview than shahrukh khan yeah. there's no one who speaks as eloquently as 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 humorously as as just as passionately as he does so yeah, uh, yeah i mean it, it, but 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 you're right i think people do overshare i think that uh, the fact that you're seeing everything now they're allowing you into their homes they're allowing you to and i shouldn't say all this because i was a journalist and a creator and a content creator and stuff so i did i did do a lot of these things i did a pet show with actors and stuff mm-hmm. so you're seeing different side. but maybe in this climate where anyway there's a there seems to be some sort of fatigue where mm-hmm. films and and actors are concerned maybe people need to yeah. pull back yeah. leave leave a little bit to mystery mm. i don't know there there is no playbook there is no rule book but uh, but certainly being over accessible mm. uh, is is maybe making people feel like but then why do we need to go into the theater and pay like a thousand bucks to watch your film yeah. it's it's that mystery right and yeah. i think of someone said that, something the other day about um was about leonardo dicaprio and they said that if you think of all the major hollywood actors he's the only one who's never been on television True. He's never done a TV show, never done a guest appearance, done nothing. He's right. just done movies. He's not. He's not even trying to do digital. None of those things. He just. Yeah. He just makes movies. And that's true. Everybody else has done something, something or, or the other. other. He's yeah. literally the last one left, left. True. who did that. And and I think of some actors here. Like I know for a fact that when I see a Ranbir do an interview, I want to see want it because I it, don't yeah. see anything else of him. Right? I don't know so what's true. happening. Like because I've always found his mind to be fascinating. When fascinating. It comes to yeah. Cinema because. So one of my first, um, so I was always an assistant uh-huh. right, when I did the Bollywood beat, uh-huh. and one of my first interviews where I was in charge of doing the setup, doing it was for um, Savaria. Oh, interesting. Okay, and so we'd made this whole set which was, looked like it was from, from the, the movie, and and at that time we also had this fear that you know hearing stories of you know Sanjay Leela Bansali coming into a set, not liking the lighting, and leaving from a TV show. I mean, like, and we all sitting in famous studio, and and and. and Ranbir actually came in half an hour before. Oh wow! And and it was his first movie, and yeah. he came in and he actually had questions on the lighting. He had perspectives on some of those things, and he said, he said, "Sir, we like this, so maybe tweak that part there." So he almost helped Have us prep own, it for him. Me. So I think back on just how we spoke about light and yeah. camera, and he had such nuance to understanding yeah. of okay, you put that there. I know it's not going to be in frame, but it's giving that there. So maybe leave it like that. Don't right. move it away. He's telling the DP a couple of nice. things, and I think back on that often and say that that's a person who looks at it from a from a very different yeah, lens. Yeah, yeah, very different. True, it's true. But you know, I think I think he is. I mean, he comes from that family, and he's he's been an assistant director with his dad, and also with Bansali himself. So I think that I, I, you can see with him there is, and I think that's true. even in his films you know mm-hmm. i mean people in his film choices i think people lately have been like 
what is he choosing but i think he does look at the larger picture mm. i think he's not uh, like a, like a lot of actors i don't think he's obsessed only with a great role yeah. i think he is certainly trying to to be a part of a larger story that that to him seems yeah. interesting um and i think that comes from the from from a very early sort of uh, it it had to have been drilled down mm. or, or you know it had to have been something that is absorbed being from the family that he is that you yeah. know the, the the love for filmmaking and the love for telling stories mm. i mean he's just he's 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 really one of a kind i yeah. mean he i i'm 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 the hugest fan yeah. what made you switch to this side <laughs> it has to be a question i have to ask you ah uh, you know i um the pandemic year was uh, 2020 was a year that i i think somewhere i was already starting to get bored of what i was doing i'd done it for 25 years and and I I started to get bored and I think the pandemic year just reminded me that I had to do something else because um if I had to watch one more film on an iPad or if I had to do one more interview over Zoom I would have slit my wrist it was just tiring I mean and in those months we did a lot mm-hmm. um so i um i i decided i don't want to do this i didn't know what i wanted to do i had actually no idea but i figured it would have to be on the other side because there's i i could have continued doing what i did but i don't think i could have done anything more i would have done more of the same hmm. so i i figured that by that time i'd already started i started my own youtube channel i was doing stuff for youtube which i was enjoying because at least you could break format hmm. a little bit over there but hmm. when you're working in a news channel there's there's some yeah. things that, i mean to be fair i mean it's a news channel they only want so much of cinema yeah. on their channel and this is what they want so i i got tired of that the, the review show i was just tired of reviews mm. um and then this thing came along and 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 uh, you know uh, bunty and karan were starting uh, dca and and they asked me to and i was like but i don't know anything about the artist management business like, no but you know you you've read you've read you've watched films for a living and you've critiqued films for a living so now come in and read scripts for a living i mean you know help actors decide uh, whether they should do these films or not mm. and that was a great pitch mm. what they didn't tell me is that's why small part of the job mm. there's actual management involved mm. uh, but 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 it's been fun you know i think i was 44 when i took that gig and uh, at 44 you don't always you don't necessarily get a chance to completely re re reinvent the wheel or do uh, completely do something different and if you do you 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 sort of start at the bottom i mean they gave me an opportunity to start at the top and 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 i've really always felt that if if you're working with the right people you learn the job mm. and fortunately they felt the same way um and and i also figured that you know even if they think i can do it then yeah. i have to give it a shot mm. uh and it's been fun it's been two and a half years and it's 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 crazy i keep joking that uh, whatever i learned about actors in 25 years i've learned way more in like two years <laughs> i mean <laughs> because now you see you see them uh, you know without, without the cameras without, without the cameras the without 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 anything uh and and uh, and i think you have a lot of empathy you have a lot of humor i mean i i, I and you look and you're like wow you know I mean we've been fooled all along. <laughs> so, it's been fun. It's it's yeah. been it's been a fun sort of yeah. ride so far. Yeah. Has it also made you look at and because you said that it's interesting the, the pitch was that um scripts and actors. Yeah. Right. And there's this conversation about saying there's a entire resurgence of writers becoming central to everything. Now. Yeah. Um I mean look at you mentioned scam a little bit scam look at some of the streaming shows even yeah. the movies that are doing well. writing is becoming so fundamental for an audience right uh, on the other end you have actors who are going far beyond just being actors you don't know you're doing stuff out yeah. there you're doing stuff on social media you're becoming almost creators correct do you feel this almost this conversation of saying okay every person who works in cinema in shows is almost building their own narrative across it's it's like their own multiverse for lack of a better term um, yeah I think that um I think the writing has become crucial everyone's recognized the importance of it and yet I think to some degree it's lip service I don't think we are I I don't think the business empowers writers enough mm. I don't think the business pays writers enough I don't mm. think the business gives credit to writers enough I mean till today mm. when a when the first time a poster drops or the first time a teaser drops the writer's name is very is 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 still not there everywhere i mean some some studios and some producers do it but a lot don't mm. and so you realize that it's 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 a they they look at it as okay this, this is important but but when it comes to credit and when it comes to you know when it comes to what they really think deserves to be out there the writer's name is still missing so i don't know how much they genuinely believe it uh, however i think what streaming has done and what shows the long form storytelling has done is put the focus back on writing mm. because you because you, you can't do any of that without the writing and the writing has to come in first and and actors now are responding actors and even directors are now responding to if if the material is good mm. they're talking about they're using words like material and content i hate the word content but yeah. uh, material and 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 scripts and and yeah. and they they are looking for for 
something that's solid and something mm. that's got meat on its bones. Um, so I do think that writers are, 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 I mean, there's a lot more that needs to be done for them. They, they, they're definitely not paid uh, enough. I mean, that is the foundation of the, of the project, of the mm. uh, show or the, or the film. But, but I don't think they are, they are as big stakeholders in it eventually. Um, as far as, yeah, I mean, today actors are, I think it's interesting because you're, you're, no one is just any one thing. Hmm. Um, you're, you're, you're an actor, you're also a creator because you're, you're making reels, you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're scripting these, you're imagining these reels. And, and who are we to say that, uh, although all of us have at some point, who are we to say that you know, reels are, 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 are any less uh, um, yeah. creative than, than yeah. telling a long form story. Um, there's a, I mean, actually the best ones are quite clever. I mean, yeah. you see creators and you go like, wow, these guys yeah. have really, I mean, it, and I don't mean just in terms of resources, but just in terms of the ideas, what you can do with them. Um, so I, I do think, I think, that, I think that actors have sort of recognized that, uh, that you, need to have a, you need to have a presence or a finger in multiple pies. You need yeah. to, and, and they sort of feed off each other, right? Your presence in, uh, I mean, having a strong, I mean, if, now that I work in an agency, I know that you know having a strong in Instagram presence is, is is will lead into your the kind of brands that you get, and sometimes even the kind of films that you get, which is yeah. scary because people are now being cast off of how many followers you have, yeah. uh, which should not be the case because uh, because an actor should be cast because he's the best actor for the role, um, and, and and so so I think yeah I mean I think I think that actors have recognized that they need they need to have a presence everywhere. Actors are starting YouTube channels. They're they're, they're all trying to do podcasts. Uh, they recognize the importance of non-fiction as mm. well as uh, you know as well as the acting gigs that they need to do and i think it also comes from a place where there's a there's just an explosion of media and multimedia and b that no one no one knows what is going to work no one knows what is the future yeah. so yeah. you just feel like okay if i secure myself in a couple of things one of these will be the future maybe yeah, yeah. and yeah. at the core of it someone asked me the other day how many people can you consider talent and how many people can you consider a business and being entrepreneurs and i think that you cannot demarcate that anymore you can't and they always were, let's be honest, even before the internet, most actors had some, like, okay, real estate yeah, going on. Entrepreneurial, and fair enough, because I think they also recognize that there is such a shelf life attached to an acting profession, right? Mm. I mean, we used to say this only for women, which is very embarrassing and, and, and not fair at all, but it's true of everyone. I mean, you can only act up to a certain point, right? I yeah. mean, of course, there are, you know, I mean, of course, there's Mr. Bachchan and there's Naseer and all these people, but uh, but but it's also your your sort of significance and your importance in a, in a project changes according to your, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, as, as you get older, you're going to graduate to to maybe supporting roles, unless people write the pikus and the pinks for you, uh, but they're not writing that for every senior yeah. actor. So I think they realized early on, and also the opportunities are so many to, to, to be entrepreneurs, to be investors. Uh, I think everyone... Uh, and everyone loves the smell of money. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, every, I, I, I mean, and it comes so. Uh, it comes so. I mean, I now have a real bird's eye view of of how that works. And and if you're if if you're if you if you have currency, then there will always be opportunities to expand your mm. wealth and and uh, you know expand your footprint in terms of in terms of what you can get involved in professionally and and uh, you know uh, enjoy the benefits of. Yeah. I cannot not ask you about Star Wars. Yeah. And about that. What if I had to kind of ask you, think how would you explain why Star Wars is yeah, Star Wars? What it is, you know, I I I I'd have to say I have to start by again. I must have been a couple of years old when I saw uh, A New Hope, probably after Jaws, mm. <laughs> but uh, but. Um, yeah, I definitely saw it uh, years after it was made, uh, probably on VHS the first time, not even on screen. Mm. But, you know, science fiction was like incredible at that time. And it re again, I keep going back to because for me, really the best cinema is the cinema that transports you. If it takes you to another place, that's the job of films. That's why you go to the theater. Yeah. Um, because in that theater, there's you and 200 other people and you're collectively, the best films collectively lift you from your seat and take you into a different world. Um, and Star Wars did that. Mm. And, and for mm. the eight or nine year old kid that I was at that time it was fascinating I mean you look at some of those effects today and I mean they're not even effects they're, they're yeah. practical in camera effects and you yeah. go like really this looks so like uh, but it still works because it was done with integrity and honesty uh, and I think there was it was I can only speak for myself I think that I think you needed to believe in something and it, mm. it, it, it really was a religion I, I don't know yeah. how to explain this it just felt like you were part of a 
I don't want to say cult because that has a sort of negative connotation to it, but it just felt like you were part of something larger. Mm. And over the years, I read so much about it and stuff. And 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 I and, and then of course they didn't get made for years. And I had this incredible opportunity when they when they made the middle trilogy when mm. George Lucas made the. I had an opportunity to go to. I was a journalist. The, you know, being a journalist just gave me the best opportunity. I should really not knock that job. I I went to uh, Skywalker Ranch in mm. San Fran and in Marin County and interviewed George uh, George. George Lucas and interviewed uh, Natalie Portman and Ewan McGregor for uh, I think it was a middle film mm. Revenge yeah, uh, Attack of the Clones Wars. Attack of the Clones I got Clones yeah uh, and and just terrible movie but uh, but but just to be sitting there with George uh, Lucas it was like uh, like this is the man who made every dream of yours as a kid yeah. so uh, um, and and then I actually really enjoyed the the final trilogy way more than the middle trilogy mm. uh, the the ones that uh, yeah. now Disney made um, and again I got an opportunity I met Mark Hamill and I mean Luke Skywalker it is like this is this is was my entire childhood i i, I went to tokyo to meet him i remember uh, they, they they got me an interview and i remember thinking you know i'm a journalist now I cannot behave like a fan and i was like have you loved abuse yeah I was yeah like, yes. fuck this shit <laughs> i mean it, I, this is i grew up on this so i conducted myself very professionally but by the end i was tearing up because my last question was something about oh no i think i signed off by saying you know thank you for just bringing so much joy yeah. in so many people's lives and i i think i was a b sort of slobbering mess but the am amazing thing was like he was unperturbed you you think you're going to impress someone That's because he's like he's like he must have been like oh, one more you know yeah. but he was really cool and i would never have done this he said um let's take a picture yeah. uh, because he knew i'd wanted it and I, and i was trying to be professional stuff and he got someone to take it i was like thank you god because i would have <laughs> been awkward to ask and then i met anthony daniels who played uh, c3po yeah. and and my god he was amazing and he signed his book and gave it to me and i mean it's, it's just been but i'm also going to admit that again there's been you know the, i think when you when you look back in retrospect i think the reason it became that for so many people is because they were not they were, they were not making a new one every year yeah. and 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 then you when it becomes assembly line factory produced mm. it it is going to become i i i'm of course they were all made as trilogies the, the, but but i don't think it was they were designed to to link into each other and have these easter eggs and stuff and and you become cynical about these mm. things so uh, so i haven't actually i mean like mm. uh, i haven't been following them as much as i did i also got an opportunity to go to star wars celebration which is mm. like a comic con for star wars lovers which is i have to tell you the most amazing experience in the world because there's 10,000 20,000 people in this massive convention mm. hall it's a religious convention it, it is really it is it is a one of those biblical kind of yeah. those those bible convention uh, it it is everyone has come to pray at the altar of the same thing and to be in that room with everyone who you know loves the same thing it it it, it you're 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 talking to strangers and you're hugging strangers and you're behaving like you know them for years because you're connecting on a deeper level mm. on something that you all share from various different parts of the world and my god i mean Th those were just the most incredible opportunities and and i think that the younger generation doesn't get it i mean mm. the, the the new kids who discovered the the latest trilogy uh, the last jedi and uh, i mean they didn't they were like what's the fuss about and the yeah. effects are so much better and everything's so much cooler but but it's not the same thing and yeah. and 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 it really i mean when 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 carrie fisher passed i cried <laughs> it's embarrassing but yeah. like it it was it, it, I don't know. I don't know how. I. I. I the, the, it's. It. Maybe there's just so much more today. The. The innocence is yeah. gone. The. The. The, there's just so many, so many more things that are yeah. maybe slicker and shinier and stuff. Yeah. But uh, it's not the same anymore. You said something right now. It, it. It stands for something. Yeah. And it. It can mean different things to different people. Yeah. Because of which character you relate to. Yeah. Um, like I didn't. I don't remember watching the original trilogy when it came out because I think my parents maybe watched it. I was too young. Yeah. So my earliest recollection of Star Wars was the middle ones, right? And the first one was a little slow, and mm. the second one wasn't great, and the third one really hit me because Revenge that connects back to the original trilogy, That's right. right? And so for me, it's like once I want to know what happened. Yeah. And so I went back, went back and discovered and watched the first, all yeah. of them, and they had remastered them. I remember That's they had, right. And I'm like, okay, one second, why have I not like yeah. gotten into this deep? And I went deeper over there, and I think by the time um, the newer trilogy kind of came yeah. but i had fully, fully committed in. to it but you know what even that would have been 15 years ago at mm, least yeah. so i'm saying at, at that time you still did that like today no one i, I don't know how many yeah. of the kids who saw this trilogy went back and revisited i, I don't think they were i don't i don't know i think I, the I, only um i don't want to call them a franchise i think the yeah. only universe two universe marvel to an extent yeah 
or the Harry Potter ones. Yeah. I think the Harry Potter one I know um, I mean obviously now it'll muddle because of the whole um, you know trans and religious uh, context to it but Correct. um I've seen that happen to the Harry Potter series people yeah. genuinely in it and I saw an entire generation of kind of, of grew of, up with yeah. it yeah 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 um but today fast maybe it's marvel but it, i think that's gotten a little it's probably a little bit of marvel a little bit of dc right not I mean, dc at all not DC. i i would not put that there um, yeah. although i was one of those people tweeting for the snyder cut oh um, oh, oh. I, god i was so boring i don't know you didn't, didn't watch the whole thing that four and a half hours when i was chatting i actually enjoyed the four and a half oh, okay no i mean you know i didn't even enjoy no, the but did you watch the justice league that came out with i did Joss i did I, i went to do those interviews so, so comparatively actually, I didn't much care for Justice League and I certainly didn't care for the Snyder cut. I mean again this is going to get me uh, I remember chatting with Rohan Joshi and I mm. he was just about to watch the Snyder cut and I was yeah. like good luck brace yourself. Yeah. And then I asked him afterwards and he said you know it wasn't so bad. I was like all right. Mm. I mean that whole that whole climax was uh, I'm not a big fan of special I I I'm it's strange I say this I'm really not a huge fan of special effects when it's just for show. Um and can, that felt like that. Can I give an example of why that happened? Yeah. So I'll tell you why I think that happens. Mm. So, I, so I've been hugely fascinated by special effects my entire life. I was uh, the whole reason I got into the world I did was like I just kind of grew up with like Spielberg for me is like yeah. there, right? It was never only special effects. That's it. But that's it. You don't want uh, only a green screen. And also, special effects are meant to be invisible, right? Yeah. I mean, that, it, it, if it becomes the show of it, I mean, I don't love those. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we're talking about Jaws, ET. Are there better special effects than ET? I mean, you can believe that that cycle could fly, right? Yeah. I mean, like across the moon and stuff. Yeah. And and you weren't, and that was the best special effects for its time. It Sorry? feels human. It doesn't feel. It like doesn't feel like it's it's manufactured. Yeah. It's yeah. like I hate computer manufactured. I yeah. hate the Transformer series. <laughs> yeah. I love the first one though. The first one had an innocence to it. Yeah. It really did have yeah. have an innocence. Yeah. yeah. Because they invested those characters with some heart. Yeah. Then they just then they, they then they're really just machines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After that. Um and. and when they talk about and there's this beautiful podcast called blockbuster and it's uh-huh. only two seasons season 1 mm-hmm. was the story of how the blockbuster genre became Invented, thing oh, wow, and it, yeah. it's about spielberg and lucas yeah. and their story right season 2 was only about james cameron right they didn't do a third season and if you listen to season 2 and james cameron you realize it once again it was him He's the guy who went from saying I'll mix it up from Terminator Terminator to suddenly saying everything is green screen, green screen everything right. is created yeah. I'm yeah. like yeah it was you James Cameron is how Yeah I I I interviewed him soon after Avatar came out and I and he got really mad at me I interviewed him in LA and I said um, I said you're going to make actors redundant because mm. you don't need actors anymore you're doing this uh, motion capture mm. and and he's like no he got really angry like he's like sorry and you don't want to get james cameron angry <laughs> and, and he was like no you're 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 being so cynical about it no but you know you need actors and i was like okay but i'm not fully buying into this yeah. and then i compared uh, inception to avatar and he went even more angry so i was like oh. i think i've just like i i never got an interview with him again um so. although and you must have read this right um the story of avatar is pocahontas that's right it's yes. exactly the same story yes. this literally if you go pocahontas right. the the animated movie and this side by side it's literally it's the, the same, same story yeah. yeah um and i i've never been a huge james cameron fan for me it was terminator 2 was maybe true lies is beyond that the avatar was never a big fan i haven't watched Titanic? the new one it's a mixture for me oh, okay. i i, I feel I like I've, i feel like i've watched titanic too many times now mm. in hindsight i'm like maybe it i'm jaded about it right but you know, titanic was again i felt like special effects without the show of it. amazing special effects to yeah. do all of those things but it wasn't being done just to show off yeah. and actually I, i really did i mean they had the best actors also yeah. because again those kind of films don't have great actors yeah. but you had leo breaking out and kate winslet was just i mean she was I, divine she was actually she was she was just incredible so i mean i i've not been a i'm not a big fan of sci-fi ex- except for star wars I, i never got into star trek uh, uh, back to the future and stuff so james cameron yeah i i enjoyed the first avatar again because mm. over there the technology was great and the 3d and stuff again the transportive element i did feel like he took me to pandora yeah. i i did feel i remember being in that theater going like oh my god yeah. and i remember re- reviewing that film five stars and people were like you know what this is rubbish it's not that great i was like but it's not just it, it's not it's every not movie, review yeah. is about a film it's about the experience actually to me 
and, and every review has their own um, yardstick. To me, it's about how a film makes me feel. Yeah. I don't think I'm an expert to tell you how good or bad a film is, yeah. but it's it's interlinked. How it makes me feel is usually connected to how good or bad it is. If it's a bad film, it probably won't make me feel like the way it it's meant to make me feel. Yeah. So uh, for me, Avatar was the first one, and then I watched the second one in a midnight screening, yeah. and it was really long and really, and it just felt like a indulgent. It felt very indulgent and felt like a retread. And this felt like it was made by a by a by a you know a cash register mm. uh, that was just you know it was it felt very I, I was very yeah, cynical I haven't about seen that. it yeah um, it's like kind of like watching the Fast and the Furious movies and you're like that's but though you know what those <laughs> are like a guilty pleasure I'm like happy to watch some of those they should just be shorter my favorite meme of recent times is a house layout someone drew and they wrote all the rooms they wrote family room family room family room and Vin Diesel's photo next to it that is the definition <laughs> of of the Fast and the Furious yeah. franchise has there been any Indian movie in like and now since you're not yeah. critiquing, uh -huh. if you look at the last ten years, you have to pick a few movies and these really had almost that made me kind of the experience become look much. You know, I uh, I really enjoyed and it's 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 not the answer you're looking for at all. But for me, Gangs of Vasipur mm. was was just such a was just such a potent. Um, incredible film populated with so many characters and a two-parter and I remember really lusting for the second part. I remember like really thirsting yeah. for that one to come and that was a that was a feeling after a long time where you really want to see more of that world and more mm -hmm. of those characters uh, and the second one was probably better than, I don't even remember, the second one was, yeah. I, I, I was better than the than the first. Uh, Oh gosh, I'm trying to think of uh, favorite actors and 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 their films. I, I love the films of I, I love the films of Shujit Sarkar and mm. I, I I'm I'm a big fan of drama. I really love yeah. uh, even my American films, even the ones that I l l like American films. I'm, I'm I'm fan of Sofia Coppola. I'm a fan of Wes Anderson. Mm. So I I'm not a big franchise person. Uh, and, and and the thing is, uh, in a pre-pandemic world, you never ask these questions about what is the last film that made you feel good in a theater because you watched everything in a theater. Yeah. So it didn't feel like I mean today films like Piku and stuff. I mean, I mean, probably would be hard to put them into theaters. Yeah. I mean, only because the, the stars are big enough. But but that story is such an intimate story that you feel like, yeah. are you okay? Is one of the best go. movies of the Isn't last it just incredible? I mean, just and again, just a film about three guys and their conversations. I mean, three folks. It's about the know. smaller things. Right? For it me, is, Piku is a weird thing to pick up, but for me, it's the most impactful. His need to go to the loo Luke, yeah. is for me what, what foremost, I connect yeah, with the yeah, most. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you're connecting to a human being's bowel movements Correct. is like for me that really was my was, connective yeah, tissue to that. It was, movie. it was, it was just, it was, it was fantastic and 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 really a film about it's it's what you said the really the littlest things. Um, I mean this cantankerous dad and this and and those two sort of and just Irfan's expressions yeah. watching the two of them and and and, and watching this old man yeah. this crazy old man uh, Irfan's face was the whole mood yeah it was just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of people. I didn't push you to ask for a conclusion. That's true. That's true. And that's so beautiful, right? Yeah. yeah. Where it doesn't, you don't have to neatly tie a bow and kind of like, yeah. yeah. I mean, they leave you that badminton, them playing badminton, you're like, yeah. yeah. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Yeah. 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 And nowadays, when you do that, it's like, oh, are you building for a sequel? Is the that's question. right. That's right. Yeah. That's the inevitable, oh, because you're going to keep Is it there open a post credit scene to this movie? Is, is going to be a thing. But I mean, I think back on recent times, and Pico would be one. F for me, for sure, which I've gone back to, I weirdly enough, and maybe for me it's comfort food, uh -huh. right? I have all I have in recent years missed Farhan Akhtar, the director and writer, mm. um, and I've gone back to some of his older movies again, right? And then I realized that I actually have had a version of him. I won't call. I, I won't sure. put her into a version of him, but I think there's a there's a similarity in just like thought process. Zoya? Yeah, I go back to Zindagi and I'm like, yeah. for me, that is my comfort. Food. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I, I, I literally, I think I watched it But it again. is such a beautiful companion piece to say Dil Chata Hai, right? Yeah. It, it is, yeah, yeah. Because Dil Chata came out at a point of time when I was in college. Dil Chata Hai was, it spoke to a generation. Yeah. It just, that's that, you know, how, how America had all those slackers and all, all of those kind of, I mean, it just spoke to, it just felt like a generation that was not being represented in the movies mm. finally found yeah. themselves on screen. Yeah. People that spoke like them, people that looked like them, yeah. people that had, that had haircuts like them, people yeah. that dressed like them. I just, Dil Chata was, was just such a huge turning point and it wasn't as massive a hit as in that year, there was Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gum yeah. and there was Gadar and yeah. Lagan, I think it was all in the same year. Yeah, they were all in the same year. Wasn't 2001, uh, yeah. I think. 
and and dil chahta hai was not was not that massive a film in terms of its box office but i think the the recall value and what it meant to people yeah. um was was far greater i think yeah. the the cultural impact yeah. that dil chahta hai will have is, is is a lot bigger than than a lot of those other films that came out that year so i speak to a lot of um, people who are, let's say I have this fascination for people who create memes out of uh, out of Bollywood, especially. Uh-huh. And I asked them, "What are the movies you rewatch?" Yeah. And the most fascinating response I got from some of them was that there's this generation of meme creator. They all rewatch Welcome. For them, Welcome is the movie they go back to. Two movies, Welcome and Tamasha, for two very different reasons. Right. Are the movies they revisit to create memes? It's interesting to say that because you're right. I see so many memes with uh, you know na- 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 Nana Patekar's sort of expressions or saying something yeah. cheeky. Yeah. And I laugh at them and I say that that basically was what Shole was for us. Like That's I remember right. as an MTV had to make a gag with uh, with with both the Cyruses. If you couldn't come up with an idea, make a make Shole. a Thakur joke, do a right. Shole joke, which now for everyone is Welcome and Tamasha. Tamasha, right. And right. Tamasha is another movie, right? If you think about it, is yeah. that when it came out, I didn't know what I felt about it. Yeah, I, I hear you. I was not a big fan. Mm-hmm. I, 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 until today, I. To be fair, though, I don't think I've watched it a second time, so I haven't really been able to. I didn't buy into the conflict. I, I just, mm-hmm. ne- I could never. And I remember it was a polarizing film at that time. Yeah, yeah. There were. It was. It had the most incredible music. Deepika at her absolute best. Ranbir was Ranbir is just consistently great, and a filmmaker who, and I think that's the thing. I think sometimes even I mean I I couldn't connect with it completely, but but he believed in it. That yeah. was Imtiaz. You know you can tell when a filmmaker is selling you something that he doesn't believe in it, but he knows it'll sell, so he's selling it. Yeah. And you can tell when he's selling you something that he fully believes in, yeah. even though you're not fully convinced. And that came through. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm a much bigger fan of Rockstar than yeah. Tamasha, but for me Tam- I couldn't buy I didn't buy into that. I bought everything else. But the, the main conflict I just could never buy into. But I know how yeah. I, I have friends who I have spent many evenings that have gone into the wee hours of the morning mm-hmm. arguing about Tamasha. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there are there are people that. So there's a, a a stand-up comic and, and, and comedian called Anshu Moore. Uh-huh. Anshu Moore used to be one of the heads of uh, Microsoft in India. Uh-huh. Um, Microsoft or, or I think Xbox. I forget which one. He quit his job. To become a stand-up comic after watching wow. Tamasha, he's wow. been doing that since then. He, I remember him wow. telling me this. I'm like, one second, and I rewatched it after he said that to me. And I sat down and said, "Okay, what is it about this?" And I realized the, for me, what had I didn't like the first time, is I feel that entire part in the beginning of the story uh, of the storytelling with the kid in the beginning yeah. that. I didn't yeah. get it at all. Yeah. Once she, once you got into the Corsica part, and, uh, yeah, I was yeah, fine. Yeah. For me, that initial part just took me so all away. Correct. Was for me personally, but I I met so many people who are like they go with, for them. It's like this is what yeah my belief system is. is. is yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I'm 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 constantly arguing with people, yeah. and I, I have friends who judge other people based on what they thought of <laughs> Tamasha. So I'm like, I failed that test. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that that's also an Imtiaz Ali thing, right? You will yeah. either really it, it is his films. Even are Rockstar quite people have like oh, only oh Rockstar Rambi. is very very polarizing as yeah. well. Yeah, though Rockstar, I I mean, there are just lots of people who just don't like it. Like Tamasha, I feel I feel people the ones who love Tamasha have a much stronger love for Tamasha than those who I love Rockstar but mm. I mean I, I won't defend it till my dying day but those who love Tamasha will like, um, oh. like oh, yeah. yeah that's that's a whole different <laughs> breed <laughs> of things um, I also get weird statements when someone asks me what's your favorite film and I say three day even till today because I'm like that genre for me was like the best genre. It was so much fun actually it re- you know when and I say this and Anupama is a friend of mine Anupama Chopra and we talk about yeah. it, when done well the the masala of Bollywood. There's yeah. nothing like it. No American film, no French film I is. Like, I mean, when when done well, yeah. those three words are very it's important. The South actually gets really. They do. And I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, one has seen, I have seen uh, a lot of Telugu cinema and stuff much yeah. more recently. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, Rajamoli has a language and a grammar that, that does that. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, Bollywood was doing it very, very well when it did it right. Yeah. Uh, when they were not trying to make a point, when it was just about let's, let's just have fun. Yeah. And Tridev is such a great example of that. The music of Tridev, those. Right. I, I mean, remember just, it. You'll... Yeah. I, I, you know, I met, I met um, the actress Sonam recently mm. and, and, it's funny, you know, in this job, I'm 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 46, and and everyone else is much younger, and they've missed that whole generation of films and actors. Yeah. And she walked in, and and they were like, "Huh, oh, someone's come," hmm. and I'm like, "So numb, <laughs> <laughs> like, oi, oi. Because now you're like basically because you you've gone through that reel on Instagram. Correct, correct, correct. You're like, yeah, I've seen this actor. If you meet them in person, like, I'm, it's not a big yeah, deal. It's not a big deal. deal. I'm like, so numb, like, <laughs> oi, oi, you know, and it's yeah, yeah, yeah it's. You know, I can keep going on and on, and and we normally actually have a rule that this episode never goes beyond an hour. We've definitely gone over an oh, hour wow, on this okay. one. Um, 
and I do this primarily so I can get a guest to come back. And okay. We do another part oh, of this. Okay. Anytime. Um, but I, I have to ask you one question: mm-hmm. uh, Is that through this entire piece and you, you, you know, your entire journey, is there something that it could be an actor, could be a director, in you know, because of the number of conversations you had with them, that someone said to you that really stuck with you through this, and well, this is something which I can't like. It's almost like embedded as it could could be as advice, could be as mm. something they said that really connected with you. Tough to pick one, but yeah, um, you know, so many. I've I've actually been fortunate because my job involved meeting so many of them, and uh, you know, and and the ones I always enjoy talking to are, are the ones who always will talk about more than just films. Mm. So someone like an Anurag Kashyap, I mean, I I've I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with him. Um, Gosh, I'm 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 finding it hard to I uh, remember the one thing that someone said, but I remember Mukul Anand. And again, I'm sorry, I'm going back to a really long time ago. I I spent and I spent a month on a set of a film that he was making in in America called Thus, and then yeah. he came back and he passed away. And then Thus, I, re- I remember the, the tease, the, the, the song uh, Salman and Sanjay Dutt. Salman right? and Sanjay Dutt, and 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 I just. Uh, I mean, I don't remember the exact words, but I guess I mean things. You know, just about if you don't enjoy it. I mean, like, I, I think it's, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's about, it's just about enjoying what you do. And of course, it's a profession, and and and, but you have to love it. Uh, and and if you don't love it, you're never going to be able to fully kind of do it well. Um, you may be paid really well to do a job that you don't love, but if you, I think it was, I think it was, it was Mukul, and and and, and you know, the, the 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 best filmmakers sort of. It's funny how, um, you know, the best filmmakers live by similar kind of rules and similar uh, sort of you know um so so yeah i mean i i remember and it's true you know i mean what they say right i mean like if you if you love what you do you won't work a day in your life mm. and 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 i i've i've noticed that about the jobs that i love and i i, I even in you know even in even in the, in the new job that i do it's it's very new but i i i there's genuine love for it there's genuine love for uh, for for the for the actors and you're like how can you love everyone but i i, mean, I you really do feel like these are people that that you have been put in this position to 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 protect and to and to work closely with and to and to help them realize their full potential and and actors can be difficult and some actors are more difficult than the others and and there are days you want to like, like pull a <laughs> hair um but but there is i mean it's it's strange i love them i mean it's a, it's a, it, it sounds it really sounds very cheesy but uh, it almost feels like you if you're put in that role of protecting them then 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 you ha- you, you have to have real love and i think you know i also had a i also i'm sorry i know we are meant to wrap quickly but no. i also had this sort of life changing covid experience i had a i had a really bad bout of covid and and it was very intense and 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 i'm told because i was out for those 8 9 days and i was i was told there was very touch and go and um and and and, and you know when i I was in hospital for 38 days and stuff. So, uh, I think when I came, when when I was back to consciousness and when I heard what had happened, and 38 days in hospital is a lo- in ICU is a long time yeah. without <laughs> without devices. So you have a lot of time to think. Uh, and I, I I really did decide that I'm going to put the focus. I, I had already started this job, but I was only about three months into this job. Um, it really makes you uh, assess your life and it really makes you prioritize and it really makes you focus on on what you love because you know i think i i i i think all of us are at a place where we'll we'll find a job mm. we'll find a job we'll find a job that even pays well um but i think you get to an age where you're like you know if i don't love this it's not worth doing and i think the i think the pandemic did make you focus on do what you love because uh, because who knows man we we will be be there tomorrow so i don't even remember i think it was mukul anand who told me first and i think people like anurag and uh, and karan and a lot of them have said it since um but i think it is about uh, you know if if you don't love it you're never going to be able to do it well yeah. uh, you could be very skilled at it but if you don't lo- you could be skilled at things that you don't love uh, and, and i think that's why i sort of tie- i got tired of the the previous gig i think i just stopped loving it i used to love watching films i used to love reviewing them and then i stopped loving them yeah. thank you so much for doing this it's no, a, thank and you, thank man. you for sharing that last part i think for me that's like a, one of the, it's a great way to to end this conversation thank you for having me um, thank you and, and and for sharing all this and hope to get you back on the show so we can go deeper into into trideev and everything else that, that and sharks will get a little bit more sharks trideev and sharks is going to be the next episode i'm looking forward next time thanks so much thank you for having me